Children have boundless energy and enthusiasm when it comes to playing with their toys or at the playground. Unfortunately, they can sometimes become injured. We asked Dr. Carl Weinert of Children's Hospital of Orange County to discuss the most common injuries he sees when children are brought in. In falls on the playground, the most common injuries are to the upper extremity, especially the wrist and uh, also the elbow. Uh, the wrist is uh, often the first thing that strikes the, the hand and wrist are the first thing that strikes the ground when a child falls from a slide or from some climbing apparatus. And uh, regardless of, of how hard or soft the surface, it's possible to sustain a, a, a fracture of either the elbow or the wrist. The skateboarders, uh, razor scooters is another uh, popular uh, cause of injuries, and um, uh, bicyclers of all, of all types, but the, the extreme ones are a little more prone to uh, some of the nastier injuries. Trampolines, an interesting uh, problem is that uh, with the trampoline, the likelihood of getting injured uh, goes up geometrically with the number of people on the trampoline. Uh, when you get a group of three or four children, Often one's coming down when the other's going up and the footing becomes very unsteady and either they fall and uh, twist their ankle or their elbow or else they, f they fly right off of the trampoline. It's not a month that goes by, in fact seldom a week goes by that we don't have injuries sustained in bounce houses from birthday parties. The protective gear that's available basically consists of pads for the elbows and the knees and a, uh, wrist guards that are uh, worn both for summer sports as well as for snowboarding, which is a, another common source of wrist injuries. A child that has a fall and uh, is unable to walk or hops home on one foot, um, and, or a situation where there's a, a great deal of, uh, of swelling, uh, or even, uh, of course, there are lacerations and abrasions, skin, skin uh, wounds uh, that can come from the contact uh, with the playground surface, but also they're ones that come because the bone is actually penetrated out through the skin. Those are genuine emergencies that have to be uh, dealt with very promptly to, to avoid uh, infection, which can be uh, uh, even into the, into the bone that can be very, very serious. The indications for trips to the emergency room are where there's an obvious deformity that where a fracture is definitely going to need to be set because the pediatrician won't have either the expertise or the medications necessary to do that in a comfortable fashion. The other thing, of course, is any of those penetrating injuries. Uh, if, the, if the bones poke through the skin, even if the uh, arm or leg isn't visibly crooked, uh, those are things that require intravenous antibiotics and a hospital a treatment in a hospital setting. I've uh, been at Chalk now for 27 years, and uh, it's uh, essentially the only hospital that I ever admit patients to. I think it's uh, both the physical plant and the staff are really extraordinary. The, uh, the anesthesia staff is a, is a big selling point for me because uh, I could do the same operation on a child in any of the local uh, outpatient surgeries and so forth, but when, when parents have a, a young child who needs to have a general anesthetic, they want the very best people uh, involved in that, uh, that procedure, and they, I think we do have uh, the best that I've ever encountered right here at Chalk. Uh, we also have a resident staff, uh, orthopedic residents from the University of California program, and also os an osteopathic orthopedic resident from the Riverside program. So there are three residents uh, who uh, work here. Every six months, we have three new ones, and they're all. This is their main training for dealing with children's injuries as well as reconstructive surgery in children. 